Hey, y'all. Grown, grown conversation. The coldest video on T.D. Jakes and the church black women who still support him you will ever see. You see, I got my winter stuff up. We're going to see some other things. See, I'm wearing the same outfit I chose to wear as we were looking at to our aunties, where as part of the almost eight, eight and a half hour presentation, we had to talk about some stuff that we needed to leave behind. And T.D. Jakes just offered himself up in the last two weeks. Now, the situation continues to develop. And some of the reason, well, this is going to be a more cold presentation. I know some of y'all would love to hear a nasty old dragon. We'll get there. But here's the problem, church ladies like myself. If we're going to drag him, we got to drag us. So I'm going to give you time to collect your purses, to figure out, to stop for a minute before you put anything in the offering plate. I'm going to give you some time. The reason that we are all sitting up here talking about T.D. Jakes again is because presumably, what well, we do know, he was at a party with P. Diddy. Now, if T.D. Jakes is a man of God, you kind of have to ask yourself, you already know that we have tape for P. Diddy talking about what he was going to do with women he was not married to, which at the least makes him a fornicator. If you've listened to his music, he is a filthy speaker. He is someone who degrades men and women and children as part of what he does. And he settled that lawsuit with Cassie for eight-figure money. So you that's not an admission of guilt technically, but it means that there was not enough proof of his innocence that he could that he felt that he could fight it. And there's more lawsuits coming. But if you listen to Pub Daddy's music back to when he was Pub Daddy, this should not be a surprise. So then you have to look at Sir Walter Jones and Sir Walter Jones so says something about guilt by association. Sir Walter Jones is Pentecostal. In the Pentecostal world, we, they really do not want T.D. Jakes to be guilty of what he's been accused of because that's going to cause too many questions to be asked. We do not have hard evidence of what T.D. Jakes was doing at that party also. So we need to be very careful about that. Therefore, I cannot tell you what he did at the party. However, there is a means by which we can infer his likely activities. I went and I watched 13, 14, 15, 17, 18 videos yesterday, not about T.D. Jakes. I did that earlier in the week and it literally made me physically ill. I'll share with you why. But we're going to do this one thing called inference by contradiction. And here it is. For T.D. Jakes to have participated in Puff Daddy's uh, fornicating festivities at his events, he would have to be the opposite of what he has presented himself to be, a being, a Christian minister. There is something in logic called proof by contradiction. You prove that one thing is true by proving that the opposite cannot be, and that they are opposite. So one can be true or the other, but not both. So if you can assume the opposite and then disprove it with the available evidence, you have also proven your main premise. In order for T.D. Jakes to have done what he is being alleged to have done, he would have to be a heretic, a liar, a deceiver, and a pervert. So we will begin by assuming that he is what he presents himself as being. This is going to take a while. Get you some beverages, put on your seat belts. We will make that assumption. Surely all the people who've been sitting up here talking about don't keep your mouth off the man of God. Well, I, well after we get finished with this, <laughs> you may wish that some people had kept their mouth off the man of God. We will need to then prove that he is a heretic and therefore a liar and a deceiver first. And then once we've done that, can we find evidence of his perversion? And there's a couple of ways we can look at that because if we assume that he is a heretic, that means he probably is gonna fall down on some other things the Bible says that he must do in 1 Timothy and Titus in terms of how you can look at his family and see whether or not the evidence of the people that are coming from him shows. It's like I have students who are 
they're not carbon copies of me, but you can tell how they were trained. It's like all my piano students that I used to have over the last 20 years all play a ridiculous big bass line. And you listen to how they speak and how they carry themselves and you hear me. Reason number 5,777,889,998 that I have to be really careful about what I teach. So you can tell who my students are, you can pretty much tell. You can also tell when it comes to Sunday school students that I've had for a long time, they begin to sound a little bit like me and how they kind of look at things. You can kind of look at the people T.D. Jakes has been around and see specifically one daughter of his in particular. We're going to leave Sarah alone for now. Because of what her sister did to a woman in her position. We'll get there. But first, because as church Black women, you know, we are supposed to be Christians, right? So uh, let's, just, let's just set down something immediately. Our foremothers were denied the right to read. If we have European foremothers, they lived at a time in which the Bible was kept in Latin and chained to a pulpit. You did not have access to it. At the same time that Africans were being imported in mass, we still did not have the ability, uh, you know, we didn't have the ability to read. Most Europeans didn't either. Most Europeans couldn't read. And the Bibles would literally chain to pulpits and you were still, there were still countries that were burning people at the stake uh, for daring not quite the same time in history, but a little bit before that. And before the printing press, it didn't make any difference. Even if there was a Bible in your home language, you couldn't afford a copy. So they are not going to be held as responsible than we are in the United States. There's a Bible in every hotel room, every bookstore, and almost every Black person's house if you're over a certain age. And if you're under a certain age, the Bible is on your phone or on your computer. We're going to be held responsible to a higher level. Therefore, if you have not bothered to read the first two chapters of Genesis and the first three chapters of Matthew, then perhaps you do not know yet that T.D. Jakes is a heretic, but I'm telling you that he is. I can prove that. First of all, then this is why the Pentecostal world really does not want to test this. To, this, to his credit, Sir Walter Jones did say at the end, that T.D. Jakes is a oneness Pentecostal. He said, get saved, because the oneness Pentecostals, also known as the Sabellian heresy, further back, believes that it's called modalism today, that God is not a trinity, but he can appear in different modes. Sometimes he appears as Father, sometimes Son, sometimes Holy Spirit. T.D. Jakes is a modalist. And this would mean that you neither have the Father, the Son, nor the Holy Spirit, where they are distinct persons and it is taught as such throughout scripture. But for those of you that need a picture of it, when Jesus was baptized, again, we just talking about third, fourth chapter of Matthew at this point. You heard this growing up, if you were in a Baptist church, how he went up straightway out of the water and the heavens were opened unto him. You'll hear this next week. And the Holy Spirit descended and lighted on him like a dove. So obviously, Jesus is in the water, in the human body, God and man. The Holy Spirit sitting on his head, and the Father speaks out of heaven. This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. How are you going to switch between modes and be in three places at the same time if you have to switch from mode to mode? Y'all out there with the in remote control. Tell me how we going to do this without one of them special TVs. And even if you have a special TV, you can't follow more than one game at a time. So tell me how you're going to be a mobilist when you only had to read three, four chapters into the New Testament, because it takes a little bit longer in Luke, when um, the baptism happens and it says multiple times that all three members of the Godhead were present, not three modes, because you can't switch that fast. And see, while you can be excused, maybe, I'm going to snatch that back in a minute from us, church women. But maybe you could be excused. But T.D. Jakes is a what now? He's not a layman. He's not a deacon. He's not even calling himself a pastor. 
He's a bishop. So you gonna sit up here and be a modalist? Bishop? You ain't even read and agreed to Matthew chapter 3 or 4? I'm, I'm, it eludes it, 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 it me right now because it's a different chapter in Luke. I believe it's Matthew 3. And if it's not Matthew 3, it's, not, it's Matthew 4 because I forgot the wise men have to come up in there. It's Matthew 4. Okay. So he's a heretic. He does not believe in the actual... See, and again, it wouldn't be a problem. But see, he has a problem that a lot of us have. You want to call, you want to do what you want to do and still call it Christian. That's the problem. You, if, if you have a bishop who's supposed to be a Christian and he teaches this against the clear word of God, it's like I said about Carlton Pearson. He up here talking about, I don't believe in hell. Well, you don't have to agree in hell with, with hell, but the problem is you're a Christian minister. So since Jesus said in Luke 16 and Matthew 23 that there is a hell and you disagree on that, you are a traitor. You don't get to contradict Christ and be a Christian. You don't get to do that. Just like as black women, we need to stop letting men tell us that they love us and abuse us. You don't get to do that. But because we let these pastors run all over us, then we go ahead and let every man Monday through Saturday run over us. So, Already, I can stop. Because a man who would deceive you in spiritual matters will do anything to you and your children. But 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 in order to understand, because I also said pervert. So let me keep going. Uh, I did a video on this when he did the Mother's Day sermon on real men pour in. And everybody was so mad that he talked about how the community was creating masculine women. And I said, that's not even what you should be worried about. What you should be worried about is that T.D. Jakes has not read Genesis 1 and 2. He's up here talking about God is the breasted one. That's Diana of the Ephesians. That's mentioned in the book of Acts. So that's Greek Asia Minor. And that's also... Conference with Love will say here, how dare you appropriate a goddess? Okay. So already we have a hermaphrodite god. Already. And again, if you want to believe this, you can go do this as a human being, but you can't be a Christian minister. Anybody go through the Bible. Get you a good, strong concordance and get you a Greek interlinear because I know that there are gender neutral Bibles now. Get one older than 20 years old and get a Greek concordance and find me a description of God in the Bible with breasts. Find me a pronoun for God that is feminine. Go do that. But he wasn't done, though. Just a few minutes later, this is the first 30 minutes of the sermon. It'll be in the description. Everything I'm going to reference is going to be in the description. This man talks about God created the world by injecting his seed into the earth. Well, of course, for him to do that, you have anthropomorphized him with both breasts and a penis. That's Kronos and Gaia. The Greek god Kronos and the earth, Gaia, got together and created all things through a sex act. So let me see if I understand this. It gets worse. This, 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 this set. We're just establishing heresy right now. God created the world how? Okay, Genesis 1 and 2 actually tells you how God created the universe. And it tells you how God created mankind. That is absolutely not how that happened. So, 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 so you can't deal with Matthew 4 because you're a mobilist. We can't get through the first book of the New Testament. You haven't even gotten through the first two chapters of the Bible, but you were a Christian minister. No, I could be done here. I'm not. If you know anything about the Greco-Roman religions and the men who followed them, because basically he's preaching Greek mythology at this point. He, and I should say he's preaching Greek belief because to many people running around loose right now in your higher level brule circles, your divine nine circles, there are people who have, and there's videos about this. Uh, there's a channel called Chris Speaks where she talks about how she denounced her sorority because their patron, their goddess was Minerva, and she realized she was worshiping Minerva. 
there are many videos of people who are denouncing that because they realize they are literally worshiping the Greek gods. T.D. Jakes is literally from his pulpit. Diana and Artemis are the same goddess. And he's literally preaching Kronos and Gaia from the Greek belief system that is still with us. And there are black people practicing it. And if you know anything about the makeup of certain words. Now, I'm not going to have an argument with anybody over this, but even the word for homosexuality and lesbian, lesbian, lesbian. Homo meaning man, sexual, you already understand what that means. Lesbos, Greece, was an island where women who wanted to be with women went. The words I want you to get closer on here, for those of you who are in black churches and you do not understand what you are hearing, pederasty, pedo, child, erastus, mature man, pedophilia, love of children. All these were practiced by Greek men worshiping Greek gods. And if you remember your Greek mythology in school, these Greek gods were literally coming and taking by force. See, I just had this conversation with Constance with love. If you read in Luke chapter two, you see, and you know your Jewish history, every Jewish virgin from Isaiah's time onward was hoping she would be the mother of the Messiah. So when the angel came to announce it to Mary, she agreed to it because by age 13, 14, she would have been informed in a observant household. But the reason people conflate that with divine rape is because of the Greco-Romans. So if you have a priest, you know, because people think their pastor is their priest and their prophet, who is up here teaching Greco-Roman foolery, then you probably are going to get every possible Greek perversion imaginable. And if you need a reminder from 10 years, about 10 years ago, I remind you of Mr. Eddie Long. Y'all ever wonder about that upside down trident symbol that he had? And y'all don't remember the Neptune carried the trident from Roman mythology? Okay, put a pin there first, but put a pin there. Because the other thing I want you to understand about these boule collections detention, is that people who are in Divine Nine and higher than that, the top 10% of the 10%. Because that's how I know that. Because W.B. Du Bois is out here talking about we need the talent of 10 who's so much better than all the other 90% who are apparently untalented and useless. And you have that kind of gap going on that, you, and you will be allowed to be the gatekeeper. Boule means servant to the king. Well, in this society, who is presumed to be the kings? The same people that we gonna spend all this time complaining about the dominant society. We got about 10%, the top 10% of black people in these fraternity, fraternity, blue lay, wanting to be service to them and keep us in the untalented, unwashed masses so they can do whatever they want. They are the buffer. And their masters will allow them to do that because it means they don't have to do dirty work. Which brings us to the case of Michelle Loud, who grew up with Tor Cora Jakes. Her story is in the description. Also with her story is Cora Jakes' response to it subliminally. They grew up together. Cora could not have a child when she wanted to. Michelle had one. The way Miss Loud tells the story, after all those years, Cora Jakes, now you gotta understand, and we're gonna come to it later, her father has a nine figure enterprise going, the Potter's House, plus his books, plus his tapes. So the Bible says, and James, True religion of the, before the father and undefiled is that you take care of the widows and the orphans. You don't separate them. You take care of both of them. And you keep your, well, it says the fatherless and the widows because it leaves some room there. Well, the children of absent fathers will fall in there. You take care of them and keep yourself unspotted from the world. You know, the world we live in, in which, you know, people used to sell off other people's, take other people's children from them and sell them off and do whatever they wanted to do with them. You know, that world we live in now. So, according to Ms. Loud, Cora suggests to her that she would love to be able to enrich her child's life. She just needs her to sign off on some paperwork so that she can travel with the child and so forth and so on. Come to find out that that paperwork signed over all rights to that child to Cora Jakes. 
And Ms. Lau did not have the advantages that Ms. Jakes had growing up to know that. So Cora Jakes took legal possession of that child. And in her response, she had the audacity to say, giving birth to a child doesn't make it her mother. And you listen to Cora talking about all the things she would be able to do because we know why. But see, true religion says you take care of the mothers and the children. And you don't stand on your worldly advantages to do evil. True religion is what? To take care of the fatherless and the orphans and keep yourself unspotted from the world. You don't make the world the excuse that you do the wickedness of taking a child from his mother. And guess who did not shut this down? In both 1 Timothy and Titus, one of the qualifications for a bishop, well, two of them, that your family have to be in gravity to you, they have to respect you and treat you with respect and also be walking in faith. We need to be able to examine any children you have that are old enough to make their own decisions, and we need them to be walking in the faith. Well, I guarantee you, if you out there stealing other people's children just because you want one and can't have one, that means that your children didn't get it. You didn't put enough time in with them. Now, we're going to leave Sarah out for, for today because her sister did something so abominable to another single mother that it trumps See, Sarah did something that comes natural. Cora did something unnatural. But if you look at it from a boule point of view, where, you know, if you're darker than me, I would just barely be able to make it into the blue vein society. Just barely. I would be the bottom rung member. And where if you don't have the name and the connections, you probably untalented 90%. Now, I made what you have behind me right here. I made the coldest winter the this cold winter background here. I'm clearly not untalented. But just by virtue of me not having the fraternity and sorority connections, you know, so people who feel like they have that kind of advantage think they can go just take things and do things with people like me. And you also, most of you. Now that's few of you out here, the AKAs and all the rest of it. And you may need to find out why your Christian sisters are leaving it and you need to stop worshiping Minerva. We'll come to that in a minute. But what I want you to understand is the Greco-Roman mindset is everybody who's not us is a barbarian. We can conquer them. We can slaughter them. We can sell them as slaves. We can use them as chattel. If you do your background on what a lot of your founding fathers were up in, so-called the founding raping fathers, yeah, we got to say that because we got to say something from Mother Sally Hemings. When you go look at the stuff they were involved in, you're going to find a lot of that. You're going to find a lot of that crossover with the Masons. Mm -hmm. You'll find a lot of that. Supposedly, Eddie Long was a 33rd degree Mason also. You'll find a lot of that. You'll find a lot of that out there. But that attitude allows you to believe that you can just take advantage of you. Okay, those two will be in the description. Further back, uh, and I might be able to find this, but this was quite some time back. Um, if I can find it, Real Talk Radio had interviewed people who worked for the Potter's House and how they were treated just above slavery, how they were exploited, how they were taken advantage of. Because again, if you're not a member of the Greek group, because remember, he's preaching Diana. He's preaching Kronos and Gaia. You can be used, abused, misused, made chattel of, chewed up, and spit out. And this man had the audacity, brother, none of the truth seeker. Put this out. I think I can find this. I'll put it in the description. He talking about it. I can't feed everyone in my zip code. Okay, let me tell you how I know that's a lie. I live in San Francisco, California. Because we got to talk about the money because we got to talk about where he's getting the money to do all this that he's doing. Let me tell you something. I live in San Francisco, California. It's a very expensive city. There are 5,700 people in my zip code. If I take the adjacent six neighborhoods that I can walk into on a two and a half mile radius, that's sort of my outside flatland range. I miss the days when I could do seven, but major injury and age. But we'll get there. We got back to the top of Lone Mountain today. Um, 
if, but if you count all the way to Long Mountain and looking over the side of the hill to the neighborhood beyond it, and you look over the side of the hill from Buda Vista on all sides, we'll multiply that number by six. This was making 36,000 people, okay? How much would it cost them to give them one meal a day? Well, Philetius has something called a poor boy sandwich, which is $4.49, and I'll buy an apple with it. So $6, a good size sandwich and an apple. Six times 36,000 is $216,000. For me to be able to do that every single day, okay, we're up to around $64,000, $6.4 million a month, which will put you in the ballpark of $77 million a year. Now, this is assuming that you're buying everything at retail prices. You wouldn't do this if you actually had a feeding program, okay? That also tells you that if you had, you actually took my actual neighborhood, which is actually only about 6,000 people, divide all those numbers out by six, you really only talking about spending $12 million a year. I'm a secretary of the board for a housing project that has about 500 people living in it. We do that on about that much, about $12 million a year. T.E. Jakes has nine-figure resources. And he going to sit up here and tell you that he can't feed the people in his zip code at least one meal a day. But see, he doesn't have to do that because the idea is if you up there with Kronos and Gaia and Diana, you consider yourself equal to them, you don't want anybody anything. You feel like my sheep hear my voice. I'm a god myself. This will be in the description also. I gotta find the right video here. There it is. This video here by being beautifully honest. You will hear this man arrogate to himself the rights of Jesus. Now I'm not going to play it because T.D. Jakes is out here trying to screen grab every single thing he can and do copyright strikes. And because I'm a professional journalist, I understand how the, uh, the game is played. My kingdom. He says this. So because he considers himself equal to the Greek gods, he doesn't have to do anything for you. The Greeks spent their lives begging for the favor of their gods. This is this, this is Miss Michelle Loud who's talking about how her child was stolen into this man's family. That's him. I'll put all this in there. And the reason we're not playing any of these videos is because he's striking channels right now. I'm a professional journalist. I know how the game is played. Now, I could do fair use, but I don't have to do that. Because what I also need you to understand before we get to that part is you're going to need to read up and study for yourself. I'm not going to spoon feed you in 2024. So... Remember, inference by contradiction. We have already shown by inference, we're using Matthew 4 and Genesis 1 and 2, that T.D. Jake's a heretic and a deceiver. We have sufficient evidence looking at him being disqualified as a bishop because of the behavior of his family members. We also know that he is making claims that he himself is Jesus because he uses Jesus' term, my sheep hear my voice, and another voice they will not follow. But you have to understand, he can't be Jesus, but that's okay because he's already packed Jesus up and packaged him off to sell. Ah, hold on, I'm trying to get it shut on. Okay, hold on here. Again, I'm not going to play it, but it'll be in the description. Jesus is the product. And in this 27 second video, you're going to hear him sitting up here talking about, I am the one that God sent and all the rest. And then he's going to say to you that Jesus is the product. It'll be in the description. Against All Hope Ministries. So let's review. We have a man who denies the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Never mind that they cannot be in molds because all three of them appear at once in Matthew 4. We have a man who denies the actual creation of the universe in favor of Greek foolishness. 
Never mind Genesis 1 and 2. He's a heretic. Because he's trying to pretend to be a Christian minister, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. We can look at the behavior of his family members, at least allegedly. Now, we haven't talked about his, his son that got caught up in sexual scandal, also allegedly. We haven't talked about that yet. We haven't talked about some of his spiritual sons that are out here getting into all kinds of trouble, too. We, we could keep going. But what we already have is a man who has made himself the Jesus for his people, arrogating the rights of Jesus Christ to himself and arrogating a Jesus that is an emanation who has breasts because Jesus is God and also is putting his penis into the earth to create. So you created it and then you essay it. Because now you're taking your creation, instead of creating everything else, you're now taking advantage of it forcibly. And that brings me to the pervert, pervert part. Now I'm going to put a couple of videos in the description that have the same data because Again, he's trying to get this evidence removed, but there's a couple of them. It's going to take him a little while to get around to all of this. But before I go on to that, I need to deal with the Spirit of God will not let you blaspheme Jesus Christ. You cannot be a Christian and use that name any kind of way. We live in a society where people were the product. T.D. Jake's own ancestors, along with yours and mine, if you are Black, listening to me, were the product. And they were used for the profit of their masters who all believe more in the Greco-Roman system of them being demigods chasing their spot on Mount Olympus on earth than anything Christ ever said. And it was so bad that one of the first ships sent to Africa was the good ship Jesus. Jesus had been blasphemed and made the means by which our ancestors were enslaved. So now you have a pastor, not pastor. Shout out to Madam Whipass. That's another channel. Y'all go back two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years and get you some knowledge about these people. Pastor rhymes with massa for those that need to know. You have this pastor up here wanting to have rest and to be putting his thing in some things and I can say that with, with authority because I have those clips too. Up here talking about I'm going to take Jesus' language and talk about my sheep here, my voice and another voice they will not follow and we just going to make Jesus the product and I know what people said at that time was well you know we just have to make Jesus attractive to people and package it up so it So we just gonna make Jesus a consumer project. Let me tell you something. It literally revolts me as a Christian. He is the maker of heaven and earth. John 1, 1 through John 1, 3. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. I had to learn that from memory before I was five years old. He is the eternal coexist, eternal self-existent one. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, the one who has the keys of death and hell, who opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. He is the faithful and the true one. He is the captain of the host of the Lord. He is the redeemer of all who believe on him and the savior of the world. 
if you're a Christian, that's who Jesus is. And by the way, whether you're a Christian or not, it's just going to take longer for you to realize it. There, there's, there's, I, I know that I have, Auntie Love is like, I'm not bound to need to any man. And I'm sitting up here thinking to myself, okay, you have a master's degree in theology. Therefore, you already know. Yeah, you can go ahead and say that, but you know what the you know what the uh <laughs> you know what the prediction is on this by Revelation 19. Never willfully will you do it. But yeah, you will. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is what is written. But she has a master in theology. She's not going to budge. There's no point in us arguing about it. But see, I don't have to argue with her about it. She's not claiming to be a Christian. See, you believe whatever you want to believe. The problem that you're going to have with me is when you come over here and you talk about being a Christian and then you say stupid stuff. You blaspheme that name. When you blaspheme that name and you want to call yourself a Christian, then we're going to have problems. See, then I'm going to have to put you all the way out there. Like I said, it's going to be the coldest video ever. Jesus is the product. That is not. That's a wolf. What, is, what, what does it say in Jude and 1 Peter? There's a natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed. The Bible doesn't, Auntie Love gave us, he's a godling and false prophet. Yeah, all that is true, but the Bible has worse names. That's a wolf. Clouds they are without water for whom the blackness of darkness is reserved forever. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Wandering stars for whom the blackness of darkness is referred forever. The type of people that Jesus said, because again, Carl from Pierce is talking about, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? That's the kind of person who would say Jesus is the product. Like he's some consumer item. So you can sit over here and talk about my sheep hear my voice and imagine yourself lusting after men and lusting after women. Imagine yourself as God with breast and a penis going into the earth or whatever it is that you think is brown and soft and ready for you. And you know how I can say that? You, you know why I can say that? Definitively. This year, it'll be in the description. Notice the pose of the person. It, 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 if you when you watch the video, you're gonna see it's more like a bachelor party type of thing, bachelorette party. Except that's not a bachelorette. That's TD Jakes back there. Look at the pose of this police officer and where his hand is and what he's doing with his behind. Notice where T.D. Jake's hand is and how close it is to the middle line between his legs. And when you watch the video, there'll be very little, and look at the look on his face. See, people accidentally tell on themselves all the time. If you listen to me long enough, and by the way, just because it probably will be, one of these will probably get taken down. This one won't. It'll take a little while. There's even a third man, and if I can find it, I will. So just in case y'all need to see it, I'll put up three videos, and we're going to make Bishop, and we're doing this at, at, at 11 o'clock Texas time so that TDJ does not have time to get to it because he's supposed to be up here do reach it. We're not gonna call that preaching, but we're gonna have enough of these up here for you to go see it before they get taken down. See now, pervert. If a man TD Jakes was on the street and was looking at a man publicly or a woman and doing that, maybe. In San Francisco's Castro district, you can get away with that. But in most neighborhoods, you're going to be arrested for indecent behavior. Even in San Francisco, somebody's going to call the police on some dirt. You're not a white man. You're a dirty old black man. See, at the end of the day, you don't get to have the privileges of a Greek god. 
So it's not that you have a thing for men and that you, you're going to watch this person dressed as a police officer dancing to a Beyonce song, which is a song about a woman, presumably talking about her husband, making those poses and never turns around to look at this man, just shows his behind gyrating. And you're going to see that hand working way down, headed toward the midriff on TV Jakes. There's a crowd there. It's being videotaped. This is happening live, which is how we know that T.D. Jakes is a pervert. And he is one who is out of control. Because you got to figure, this man has nine figures worth of ministry to lose and has so little control of himself. There's, a, there's 50, 60 people in there. But, you know, his cult here hears his, his, his voice, so he thought he was safe. But you got cameras, so you know this can go out. But you are so overcome by your lust that you no longer have control of yourself. That's how we know. And this is called inference by contradiction. We do not know because we do not have video evidence that T.D. Jakes did the things that P. Diddy would do if P. Diddy's parties. We will never know that for certain. But the reason that people do not want to consider it is because they consider T.D. Jakes a Christian minister and a man of God. So we did a lightweight version of inference by contradiction. We can infer that T. Jakes would be the type of man who would do the things that P. T. P. Diddy could do at a party because we have shown, if we take the assumption that T. Jakes is a man of God, the evidence shows that he is a heretic. He's a liar, he's a deceiver, and he is a pervert. And that type of man would go to P. Diddy's party and do the things that pervert P. Diddy would do. The videos I've referenced will be in the description. And again, it's 11 o'clock in Texas. He got other things to do. He'll catch up with those videos eventually. His team will. But right now, the liar, the deceiver, and the heretic is in the pulpit talking to that cult that he has. And a lot of the people in that church who support that who pay to enable what you have now learned about and what you can see in the videos and description are churched black women like us. A lot of you listening to me. I've referenced it a couple of times. T. Jakes has about nine figures he's working with, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less after COVID. Those are pre-COVID numbers. Every week before COVID, the black church was running $500 million a week. $26 billion a year. And so what I need you to understand is most people in the black church are black women. So we have paid for these men to lie to us on eternal matters, to not open the word of God to us. See, my pastor can't do this because he's pastor of the church where there were too many people taught by Dr. Desi Webster, a woman, the first black woman to open a Bible school fellowship Bible Institute of the type of that type west of the Mississippi. She was resisted by all the black pastors at this age, uh, most of them in San Francisco, not all, but the majority. I understand why. Because Dr. Webster taught her students how to read the Bible. My grandmother was a student. My father was a student. My mother was a student. And for two weeks when I was four years old, so was I. You know what I remember? They were studying the book of Isaiah. Why can I tell you that Mary and every observant Jewish girl at that time was hoping that she would be the mother of the Messiah? Because... 
Dr. Jesse Webster, the week that I was there, was studying Isaiah. It was chapter six because they let me try to pronounce May her shout out has bads. See, they even let a four-year-old read the Bible, even hard stuff. It was in Isaiah six, the late parts of six or seven, up in there. And up in there is where you have the prediction of the virgin birth. You know why I know that? Because of Dr. Desi Webster. So a pastor who has a whole bunch of students of Dr. Desi Webster in the church knows we all over here like this. Because we know how to read the Bible. We know how to study the Bible for ourselves. That was the point of Fellowship Bible Institute. Dr. Desi Webster taught her students how to read, how to study, and how to teach the Bible. Not Baptist tradition, not Pentecostal tradition, not hoopalistics. Look, I'm not even a Baptist preacher. But if I want to, I got to hoop and holler because I don't want people to do it. I can do it. I got the voice to do it. Probably broke my mic there. But I can do it. I could be the biggest hooping as pastor. Yeah, even as a woman. If I wanted to do that, if I didn't care at all about scripture, I could preach y'all crazy. As a musician, all I got to do is tune my voice up and y'all think you heard the anointing of the voice of the Lord. I can do it. She didn't teach that. She taught us how to read and understand the scripture for ourselves down to a little four-year-old who was a grandchild of her student. I am the youngest and last, well, no, my sister is, but she was two. But she was there too. She got an opportunity at two years old. My sister and I are the youngest, last remaining students of, well, not the last, my father's still alive. The reason he is the brilliant Bible teacher, he is. Dr. Dennis Webster and the brilliant theologian that he is, she gave her him the foundation. The reason my grandmother and my mom and I are the Sunday school teachers that we are is because Dr. Dennis Webster gave us a foundation so that when Pastor Kiva Abanil preaches, he knows. He went back to seminary. He didn't have any choice. Pastor McNeil came with a great reverence for God and a great reverence for God's people. He and I have discussed T.D. Jakes. He said, the problem is the people are not ready to hear what you and I know about it. That's the problem. But Pastor McNeil, no, you keep it together because we're going to be on your neck. He and I have had some conversations about stuff. We've had some theological differences. Nothing of a heretical nature, nothing major serious. People can have disagreements about things that are not related to the nature of God and their salvation. I'm not saying we all have to believe the same thing. I'm a Baptist, but I don't think I'm ever going to quite be a Lutheran, even though if you've listened to me long enough, there are reasons I'm sort of kind of inclined in that direction, but then there's things that I'm not going to ever agree on over there. But none of those things have anything to do, if you look at the Lutheran creed and what I believe, 99.999% of it we agree on, because you, if you go open the Bible, we agree on those things. But I can go check it because now Luther Bible is about halfway between today's Protestant Bible and yesterday's Catholic Bible. Well, today's Protestant Bible and today's Catholic Bible, the Luther Bible, somewhere in between there. So it can get complicated, but about who Jesus is, about the nature of God himself, that's not a problem. We can disagree on some things. But I bet McNeil knows that first of all, he bet not come up in there talking about uh he better not get up in the pre-pool pit and start preaching Kronos and Gaia. Because he knows that because he has enough reverence for God himself. And, and of course, holds that name of Jesus Christ in high reverence. So much so that he would never get up in his pulpit talking about these are my sheep. He said, he said, look, I'm the under shepherd. I'm the chief servant. I have to answer to God for everything I teach y'all, everything I do with y'all. He knows that. That's why he's a good leader and a good under shepherd. And that's why the Lord let him be safe with nine figures worth of responsibility. We are helping five generations of black people. And in addition to helping five generations of black people, we are also, like my dad was doing a wellness check on one of our oldest members who almost will be 100 next year. We're doing a wellness check on both. We do wellness checks. We check in with our members from the oldest to the youngest. We are doing five generations of ministry. We have a breakfast program for the children. This is the other reason I can tell you it does not take nine figures worth of money to feed the kids in your neighborhood. 
and the adults too, because when the kids are finished eating, after the kids are finished eating, and see, Auntie Love, see, she said, this is how matriarchies operate. This is correct. But because most African Americans have some memory of how we used to do things in Africa, every so often the balanced patriarchy operates this way too. Because Pastor McNeil remembers the Black Panthers feeding program, and we know it was women who inspired a lot of that. That's a different video. Point I'm trying to make is a pastor who is honest to both God himself, to the Word of God, and to the membership has an informed membership. Is not going to do the foolery, which tells me that the reason that these pastors keep running all over us, it's our fault. Let me put down two basic principles for you. You don't have to agree because they're going to come bite you in the butt anyway if you don't. One. Predators are responsible for their predation. Number one, it's not the victim's fault they're the victim. Absolutely not. But number two, once you know you are responsible for you and everybody you can influence and everybody you can carry out of there, if you are a black woman with children, you are responsible for you and what happens to them when you know. Here's what worries me. It does not worry me because I've known for 20 years that T.D. Jakes is the heretic. What worries me is all the heretics sitting in the pews. How are you going to name that holy name and send under a man who would package him up as a chicken? How do you dare to call yourself a Christian and you haven't even mad, man, you haven't even mastered Genesis 1 and 2? How you going to call somebody a man of God and you ain't even cracked the book to read the first two chapters? How are we going to do this, black church women? Are we worshiping these pastors or are we worshiping God? Because if you're worshiping God, you're going to read his word and see what he has to say about himself and everything else. If you're worshiping God, then you're going to be interested in studying the scripture. Even if you don't do anything, and I'll put it in the scripture, if you don't feel like you can read through the book of John on your own, even though it is one of the easiest books in the Bible to read, I have Bible studies for John and Acts. And that will set you straight on a lot of stuff that goes on in your church that you do not need to be supporting anymore. I want you to listen to me. I want you to hear me really well. And I'm going into areas of my life and my memory that are difficult for me. Because of the losses and the pain that I still feel. But we're going to do this because I want you to understand that if I can do it, you can do it. Eight years ago, I was still one of those little black church women who felt I had to be involved because I had been so gifted and I survived in the community. I survived for everybody else. Some of you know me as a musician. I'm a very good musician. Class, classical, gospel, jazz, whatever I practice up, I can do. But we're short musicians who are trained. So I'm here, there, and everywhere. And embarrassed. I'm showing up giving and giving and giving and giving and upset because I'm spending so much time doing this. I'm not making the money that I need to make. And right now, empty envelopes promising to do better the previous, the following month because I was embarrassed not to have something to put in the office. But I've been there. I was in love with a particular choir director. And I don't tend to talk about the black men I don't hold in honor, but you need to know that he was cool with his buddies from way back when, some of whom were being hit on by the men in the choir, or at least on Facebook, and others who were having adulterous affairs and baby showers and forgot that we were all linked up on Facebook, so he accidentally invited all of us to the baby shower with the other woman. And said choir director already knew that this was what was going on because the woman who was being cheated on had already told him, and he kept these people in the choir. So guess who had to call him and be like, you, hey, we both went to Sunday school. You know that God nearly wiped out the children of Israel because Achan came in there and took one piece of gold and one piece of clothing. And God told Joshua, I won't even be with you till you get the evil out of the camp. We both went to Sunday school. What is you doing? But see, he had said previous year, 
I know you're here because you love me, but I hope you're here because you love Jesus Christ. So later on, he had to hear, I do love you, but I also I love Jesus Christ more. And because I love Jesus Christ more, I'm going to have to leave you. Had he asked me, I would have married. Before that, I would have married him. He is one of, he is the fourth. When I lost him, I lost his whole circle. Would you like to know what God did to that whole circle during COVID-19? Remember what I said about Aiken? And how the Lord said, if you do not put, if you do not put that wickedness out the camp, I will not be with you anymore. See, Auntie Love brings to our attention that yes, God ordered the people of Canaan wiped out. And but what we forget is that God ordered all the sinners wiped out, including the ones in his own camp. That happened a whole bunch of times. God's not a respecter of persons. Whether you say you worship him or you say you worship anybody else. If you mess around, you're going to leave here. It's like, I love, you could be a mole, a bowl, a vermin, a rat, a rabbit. If you roll up on that house, and a human being. And if you roll up on a house, I'm going to tell y'all, you're going to heaven or hell right away. Consistent. God is also very consistent. You, you play around, you pay the consequences. Again, his whole, everybody was complicit in his entire family. Because God's not going to do it. Well, okay, so here's what happened. All the people who were in that circle that I left, When I tell you that God broke that down such that it can never be repaired, everybody involved in it. Folks died. Things fell off their foundation. Properties were sold. People got up in the middle of the night and disappeared and left people in disarray. It, they tried to recoup it. It was the saddest, most pathetic thing ever. Because see, But the Lord told me to leave it before that happened. And I did. 18 months ago, around about June the 20th, 2022, June 19th, actually, Juneteenth. At the end of a very bruising afternoon, I could see that two things were about to happen. One, someone that I knew had a taste for foolery. They also decided to pal around with someone with Hitlerian ideas about half of the future Black race. And the Spirit said to me, it is June 19th. It's Juneteenth. I'm freeing you. Come up out of there. I have a book out. Perhaps you know about it. Perhaps you've heard it. I, I, have, I have a book out. So... Had I said to myself, let me just hang on, because by this time I would have influence and be able to reach 20,000 people with the book. There may have been some good that I had done. I would have had an audience of 20,000 people by now. I love all 888, and I am content with all of you here. Because here's the thing. I'm a church black woman. I've heard a lot of foolery. COVID-19 took from me 100% of my church activities. I've only gone back to 10%. I've lost 90% of my church collect connections. Online, I don't know how much a percentage of, okay, you know, their channels I'm still associated with. Half of 5%, maybe? And what I used to be able to reach and what I would have been able to reach had I compromised. But if I compromise, the children who look at me, who are growing up to reflect the kind of woman that I am, will also, they are Black, going to be Black women who are going to learn, would have learned from me that it is okay to compromise because the music was good and it felt right and these men need to be uplifted and we need to hold them up in their foolery and cover for their perversions. I didn't even tell y'all about how they bought in the bishop to rip off the people on Good Friday. That was actually the last straw.
That was my last day there. Because I owe the Lord Jesus Christ not only my life, could have been gone age 16 by suicide. Could have been gone age 24, 25. Caretaking for my grandmother, uncontrolled high blood pressure, about 60, maybe 70 pounds heavier than I am today. And found out I was being used as a beard by a churchman. Could have been gone. I owe my life and my eternity to the Lord Jesus Christ. I have now spent, as of January 15th, I'll be 43. I would have spent 34 years since nine years old in service to my fellow Christians. If I allow myself to excuse the foolery, I'm the student of Dr. Desi Webster. I'm the child and the grandchild of her best students also. I went to the church dominated with students of Dr. Desi Webster. So I got all these people behind me who were my elders and I knew Dr. Webster personally, although I was very young. I have all these people who are younger than me who are going to come bring me all these questions about T.D. Jakes tomorrow, who are looking at me. But more importantly, I owe my life and my eternity to the Lord Jesus Christ. And because it's him that I worship, it behooves me to compare every man who dares to name his name to what he has said who he has said he is and what a man must be to stand for him. What you let your pastor get away with, you also will let your husband get away with. You will let some man run over you who's not even committed because you are practicing it every Sunday. Black women, we practice for in church every Sunday. And, and let me just put this out there. I've held my peace in the comments for 18 months. But over the course of that 18 months, I had to educate a whole bunch of people, all of whom I left behind, and all who will not be with me in 2023. Don't bring me no more news about these men, these little godlings you keep following and being mad at because of the men that are up there on their shows that you've already known for 18 months since I left, they keep getting airtime. You keep getting your feelings hurt, but you're still going back over there. Here's what we're doing on Sundays. And it used to be Tuesdays and Fridays. And I used, like I said, I used to be, I used to do the same foolery that a lot of you were doing too. We are allowing ourselves to practice supporting men who allow other men or directly hurt us. We are putting time, we are putting energy, we are putting money. This is the last day of 2023. You have been warned. We're not gonna do none of this over here. And by the way, I know that one of these individuals is listening to me. On my page, ask me if I care. And in fact, I do. It still hurts me. It's been eight years. We had the best gospel choir in San Francisco. And a man I loved was the best director. See, I, I've, I've, I've never been a Pookie and a Ray Ray type. I've always been with a good black man, always. Pookie and Ray Ray were terrorizing the neighborhoods, selling drugs, breaking into people's houses, 
and lived in danger of their life every day, they made my military father had to stay in military training another 20 years to defend us. I've never been attracted to that. I've done my best with good black churchmen who are looking up to the T.D. Jakes and these other, the other man, I can't remember his name right now. It's a memory I have blocked out. Passes, whole goo gobs of San Francisco passes were not happy with the offering on a particular day at a particular event. And they brought in a man on Good Friday known for being able to raise a bigger offering who got up and preached heresy about Jesus Christ on Good Friday. And these men, some of them sat up there and leered like T.D. Jakes leers with his hand massaging, at least allegedly, his manhood looking at this police officer twerking his behind. And these men sat up there and leered at this money coming in. And the scene that I'll never forget is somebody sent their little black girl down there to get in the hundred dollar line. And the heresy he taught was, the seed is money. Believe it is Luke 5 or 411 that says the seed is the word of God. That is a heretic. And that is why I had to leave 60 people that I loved so far, including the man I loved. Because as he said, I know you love me. He said that to the whole choir. But I hope you love Jesus Christ more. If you're not a Christian, there's a good chance you've been speaking out against a bunch of these pastors for a minute and we're wondering where people supposedly who knew Christ well were going to open their eyes and see it. In the situation 18 months ago, I don't still don't hate any of the people involved there. But I had to leave. Because I wasn't called to be part of the quarter forever. Same person demanded it. And because my loyalty is first to the Lord Jesus Christ, I wasn't put here to put up with foolery. And I'll tell you when that began to go wrong. There was a well-known Christian content creator that was a guest. And I had hoped that there would be sincere interest. And if there had been sincere interest, then there also would have been a change in behavior. There was not. And so I had to leave it. And it's not because I don't love the people that were involved in that situation. If I ran into them somewhere in the United States and they needed my help, they sincerely needed it, they would still have it. If they reached out to me on a real emergency and I could help them, I would. It's not a question though of personal preference. Either you're gonna be loyal to Jesus Christ or you are not. You cannot serve two masters. If you're going to serve T.D. Jakes after what I've showed you here and people have been trying to tell you for 20 years, but you call yourself a Christian, you got some of the same problems he does. And I'm just going to go ahead and say this. You know why I respect Uppity Unicorn and Confidence with Love? Like I said earlier, it's one thing if you know you're not a Christian and you will advocate things that Christ will not have you advocate because you're not a Christian. You don't have any, you're not showing him any loyalty. You're not claiming to. But a whole bunch of church black women who want to be Christians, but they want everything the world wants. You remember what I said about taking care of the widows and orphans and keeping oneself unspotted from the world? You know, these are the kind of women that want to have their little cliques and want to be held up and, and be held above other people and all this. No, you don't get to do that. We all have one master. We are all sisters and brothers. You don't get to do that, but you want to live like the world. You think 
that you can go and tell other people what to do with their children because you're smarter and better. The Lord didn't send those children through you. Excuse me? That's why black women who think they're better than poor black single mothers will go ahead and still big up a Cora Jakes. I can understand them bigging up Sarah, kind of, who's had her own unfortunate experiences in that area. But we'll stand behind his family even when you know that that's what happened. This has been out the street for a minute. You have a whole bunch of Christian church women who are trying to blend stuff that does not blend. I made someone I love so mad once when I said, get off the fence. Because you can't blend everything in and still call yourself a Christian. Like it or lump it. Jesus Christ demands complete allegiance. And because he made a complete sacrifice. You, you, you understand this. You, 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 you on the throne of heaven and you come to be in a stable where some, some donkeys and some oxen have left their slob. Because you know these, these, these things chew the cud all up in that manger. I'm sure Joseph did his level-headed best to make sure that manger had clean straw. But even when you think of them having clean straw, it's the middle of the night and the stables have not been cleaned out because that happens in the morning. So you are God himself in the flesh. Your mama is out here in the stable with the animals. And this is how you come up in here. And you're going to die the most humiliating death that the Roman mind could put together for the barbarian. He made a complete sacrifice. So he has a right to demand complete obedience. You don't get to mix your tired little, we're going to send our baby down on the $100 line because this heretic has gotten up here and predicted that if we do that, God's going to give us this, that, third. You do not get to use Jesus Christ to try to live like a white woman. And, and not just any white woman, a white slave mistress. You, you, you don't get to do that and still call yourself. The heretics who, who are T.E. Jakes are living on those of us who do not even have enough knowledge, nor do we even care enough to get enough knowledge, who are in the pews. The Bible says, and Walter, Walter Jones preaches about this, about how half of the problem is going to be unjust men, but the other problem is going to be women who want to live in the pleasures of the world and be dead while they're still alive. If you're not a Christian, that's not a problem. In the sense that, since you have not pledged allegiance to that name, okay, we don't get to judge the unbelief. There are things that confidence with love can say and do, and I got to be quiet. I don't get to judge people that do not believe what I believe. The Bible says that. You don't judge the unbelief. But you gonna call yourself a Christian? And do the foolery. Silly women laden with lust being led from house to house by false teachers. The Bible says that. So Walter Jones, one of the very few people that would actually read that out. But if you are giving nine figure money a year, if we are, we are giving 26, because I put some money into the foolery myself. I told y'all about it. If we continue to fund the foolishness, we are the silly women being led from church house to church house laden with lusts by these no good, false teachers, traitors, heady, high-minded, abusing and misusing the men, the women, and the children. We are funding this. And see, what you are not going to hear anybody teach is from the book of 2 John. One of the very few books of the Bible, an epistle addressed to a woman. Her name was Electa. Now, it could be to the elect lady. In Greek, we're not sure. But it says Electa. So we'll go with that. The Apostle John, the person to whom Jesus said, Son, behold thy mother. So that as Mary aged, the Apostle John took over the primary care of his mother. The person to whom Jesus committed his own mother, since the Lord Jesus was going back to heaven, 
This is how close he was to the Apostle John. The Apostle John in 2 John wrote a letter to Electa. In your Bible, it may say the elect lady. Um, we do not know if that was a name or a title. Now, in saying that she is the elect lady, he accords her an equal privilege to the men who are the elect. Galatians 3.28, John and Paul agreed about this. All are one in Christ Jesus, no difference. But he had written to the elect lady who had a big and beautiful house, who was taking care of Christian hospitality. In those days, the church met in houses, and because there was persecution, Christians were often on the move, and how they helped each other survive was to open their houses, and those houses became places where Christians met. Over in 3 John, we find out there are already people dominating the flock and teaching false doctrines. This is also in Jude. This is also in Revelation. So the Apostle John in 2 John writes this beautiful letter to the elect lady or electa, and he assures Electa that he loves her and that God loves her also, but he has written to warn her of a difficulty because false teachers are passing through. And he warns the elect lady, Electa, whom I love. If you wish a false teacher, even say God speed to him. You are being, you will be charged by God with participating in his evil deeds. Electa, be careful. Do not partake. We call that, but see, that's not fair to the women. No, we call that accessory to the crime even in today's. If you are involved, if you are a black woman who has a drug dealer as an associate and you get caught with the stuff, you go into jail as an assassin. A whole lot of black men are black women are in prison that really shouldn't be because they were accessory to the man's food. It's still dangerous. So, ladies, church women, black folks. When you don't vet your pastor and you let him run all over y'all, because like I said, we know from 3 John and also Jude and also 1 Peter and also 2 uh, Second Peter and 2 Timothy, that the, there were enough false teacher, godling, traitor, perverts that were running around loose by the end of the first century that Peter, Paul, and John, and Jude have to address it. And what were they doing? They were misusing the women's resources. And the women, because the whole Bible isn't finished yet, because remember I told you all the way back in the beginning that people couldn't read because they didn't have access. The Bible isn't even completed yet. So the Apostle John, who took care of Jesus' own mother until she passed, is the person sent to go warn Electa, the elect lady, be careful. Because false teachers are seeking to use women like you, just like Paul said it much, much more uh, roughly, silly women being led from house to house, laden with lust. Paul was much less gentle. John was much more gentle. Even you read the book of John and you look at how Jesus treated women and you realize that John would have been so close to Mary, you understand it. He says, Electa, I need you to understand. I don't want you to entertain these men. Because God will count to your account that you helped them, that you gave them support, and it will be counted against you in terms of your rewards. If you support them, you partake in their deeds. T. Jakes is up in his pulpit right now. And this video was probably about as long as his church service. And there are uncounted thousands of black women who are supporting this man being a heretic, a liar, a deceiver, a traitor, a person who sits by and lets his family steal children, a person who would package up Jesus and sell him like a chattel, and is a pervert because he did that foolery in public with cameras. And every one of those women is going to have held to their account that they assisted him. Every one of us, and I speak as someone who lost 90% of their church circle, because I actually fear God and I know what the Bible says about it. I don't care how much I love the man and even the women who are associated I don't want all that counted to my account. 
do you Oh, you know, we can't vet men. Even the FBI and the CIA and the Army can't vet men. No, the reason they can't vet men is because they have a recruiting quota to fill. And they have to fill it. So they don't have time to take the time to learn all about these men. They have a certain number of criteria. They're not vetting deep enough because they are desperate. The United States has bases all over the world. They have to keep those staff. The law enforcement apparatus in this country has to be kept stat. But you have to be kept stat. But you don't need to have a thousand people, a thousand men. You need to vet two. You need to vet your, well, maybe more than two, depending on what you have going on in your family. But in terms of your choices as a Christian black woman, you need to vet your pastor and whatever ministers and deacons you have. So maybe more than two. You need to vet any man that has influence over you. And I, I've given you some tools here. Inference by contradiction. If he is a man of God. But that means you will have to study the Bible. That means you've got to at least master the first 11 chapters of Genesis. And you've got to master the book of John. And Acts. I'm going to make that as easy for you as possible. I'll put that in the description. Because if you don't. See, the reason the black community looks the way it does. Because remember I said earlier, the predators are responsible for their predation. We are responsible for not leaving them in the foolery that they've made and letting it collapse on them if we continue to uphold it. And that goes for the church on the corner. Our children are going under-resourced because we're giving money to the likes of TD Jakes. We can't feed ourselves in our zip codes because we're giving money to the likes of TD Jakes. We are teaching our children it is okay if the man can hoop and holler and make us feel some type of way that him for us to for him to be able to abuse us and them. We as mothers and as teachers have to take responsibility for that. Now, like I said, you find me eight years ago you would have found me confronted with these same realities and having to make cold, hard decisions. That still hurt me because I'm not someone who could just turn love off. I mean, I can practically turn it off, but it still hurts. And without hatred, but see, if you claim to be a Christian, it's like that man said, he was right. He can never say I didn't listen to him. He just didn't really think that I listened to him for real. For him, it was rhetoric. For me, it was real. If you are a Christian black woman, you have no business worshiping these pastors. You do not owe them your loyalty in terms of allowing them to lie to you, to deceive you, to take advantage of you, to take your time, your treasure, and your money, your time, your treasure, and even your body and your children's bodies and souls, and have them do nothing in return. You do not owe them that. Je you did not learn that from Jesus Christ. You owe Jesus Christ that loyalty, and he will take care of you. The Lord Jesus can get Christians from around the world to do things for you that people ordinarily wouldn't. The Lord Jesus can make your YouTube feed you white folks who do not want you to know information who will tell you how to profit on all sides of the market. I'm a witness that. Look, the Lord Jesus will make people do things for you that they don't even want to do, but they ain't going to have any choice because your big brother, Jesus Christ, technically becomes your adopted brother is the only begotten son of God, but you adopted his family and your father can make stuff happen for you. He will lead you to the proper fellowship. I have good fellowship with the Christians in the park. I don't always have to be in church to have good fellowship. I have good fellowship talking with Christian friends of mine. I don't have to go to church for that. I worship in Gelnhausen remotely and have good fellowship in halfway around the world. In Gelnhausen, Germany, with the Church of the Nazarenes Evangelical Free Church. And what I can't understand, it got subtitles. I you ain't got to be sitting up here having to fill some quota on some man. And the Bible clearly says, Psalm 118.8, 8, check the book. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Yeah, but he's a high value man. And he's a, it, well, Psalm 118.9, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. What is you doing?
Not what are you doing? I had to go into African-American vernacular English because you know how proper I can speak sometimes, but sometimes I have to break it down so that you will hear your mama, your grandmama, your great-grandmama, your great-great-grandmama slap the taste out your mouth from worshiping these perverts. What are you doing? I have a problem with T.D. Jakes calling himself a Christian. I have a problem with people sitting in the pews calling themselves Christians and enabling the foolery. And such were some of you, and so was I. In the same way that the Lord Jesus Christ showed me the things I need to, did to do to walk away from a total in 18 months time, in eight years of time, a total of more than what would have been 20,000, but already was 12,000. He has sent me to tell you to come out from among them. I did a video sometime ago. I don't know who this is for, but get out now. Get out now. Come out from among them and be separate. And I will receive you as sons and daughters, saith the Lord. I can't remember exactly where it's from, but you can Google that. This is the last Sunday of the year. Let it be the last Sunday that you sit up here and worship some man in church who shall die. Worship some man in church who would put himself in Jesus' place and strap on breast and be inserting his lower member arm, massaging it for someone he has no right to. Oh, by the way, T.D. Jakes is married. That's also adultery on top of everything else. Well, so a whole lot of these other people run around with every woman and every man. And by the way, as long as we're on the subject, there's some music directors y'all need to leave too and put down. Pastor McNeil, I remember that. Came through and met some of these same individuals and said, yeah, we ain't never doing that again. I don't care how long y'all have had a musical of tradition like this. You ain't never, we ain't never doing this again. No. That's a whole nother story. We done known that James Cleveland died of AIDS and was having origins in the upper room since before I was born. And the best classical choir in San Francisco, they just love them some of the music of James Cleveland. It horrifies me even more now. But I remember hearing James Cleveland, that particular song does not even reference God at all. And they just were going off on that. And I'm like, y'all haven't listened to it. By the end of James Cleveland's career, he has completely slid out of orthodoxy. But then you find out what was really going on. I'm 42. This was known before that. And we keep putting up with the foolery. We keep letting these people tell us that they are Christian ministers and choir directors and do all manner of evil to the men, the women, especially the women and especially the children. And you don't think we're... Look, Black women, do you know why we have the lowest net worth of all women in the country? We keep receiving the error of our ways funding the foolery. That's why. It is the last Sunday in 2023. Let this be the last Sunday that you fund your spiritual destruction and the spiritual destruction of your children. Let this be the last Sunday that you let anybody, and by the way, there's some women preachers too. We just don't have time to get to all that. Let this be the last Sunday that you set up and that someone sit in front of you and call themselves a man or woman of God but you see from just basic scriptural knowledge that they're not telling you the truth. Let this be the last Sunday that you go to a church where they don't open the Bible and show you where to find what they're talking about. And if you don't want to do that, that's up to you. But let me tell you what we're not going to do. I'm not going to entertain certain conversations in 2024. 12,000 people. So once anybody shows me, I left 90% of my church circle. Once anybody shows me they ain't got no interest in learning what they need to know to be able to defend themselves, 
I'm done. If you keep showing me, again, I left the very last of them in 2023. You keep showing me that you want to keep going. You want me to pay attention. You're going to keep going back over to foolery. And you keep bringing me to foolery. You get knocked out. You're not going into 2024 with me. I already left all this foolery. Now you got to do the work. Who are you actually loyal to? If you are not a Christian living, listening to me, are you loyal to yourself and your own children? Because by the way, we could have gone over to the conscious community. We could have talked about politics the same way. And I'm not talking about any particular kind of politician because I could take down Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, Mike Pence, or anybody else you could name. Pretty much. There may be a few exceptions to the rule out there. But I, I could break all of them down. I'm not talking about that. Who are you loyal to? If you're not a Christian, at least take care of yourself and your children. Stop using your time, your energy, your treasure to support people to hurt you. It is one thing to have had our ancestors taken by force to be beaten, to be worked to death, to be burnt. That's one thing. It's another thing when you are, what did Auntie Love say, addicted to suffering, when you are trauma bonded, when you are fighting for the bottom, when you keep going back to get beat down again, when you keep signing up for volunteer slavery. It's one thing if you're not paid on the plantation. It's another thing when you pay to be in the plantation and get all this. We, over here, I'm not going to do that in 2024. Like I said, this is the coldest take on T.D. Jakes you will ever hear. It's also the coldest take on Black women that you will ever hear. Don't bring me no foolish news. I will cut you off. I've already cut off 12,000 people. I have no problem. We are not doing the foolery in 2024 over here. You got 24 hours to get your life together over here. You have as long as you want to take. Because there's people that at midnight, their life with me is over. They just don't know yet. Uh, you have as long as you want to, but we're not going to do the foolery over here. I don't ever intend to address T.E. Jakes ever again. If you don't know what you need to do, I'm just going to refer you to this video. I've given you the scripture. Matthew 4. Matthew 3 and 4, I think it's Matthew 4, Genesis 1 and 2, uh, Luke 16, Matthew 23. Go read up. I've got the videos in the description. I'm just going to have my channel come, come, taken down to make it easy for you. If you want to know about this and these things on TD Jakes, I've shown you what they were. You go into the description and you get them. In 2024, we do not have the luxury of not studying up and knowing what we are doing. I taught you today about proof by contradiction. It is a thing in logic. If you people want to convince you of something, you assume the opposite and you see if you can disprove that by the available evidence. And if you disprove that, you've proven the other. The people want to hold on to T.E. Jakes. We got evidence that he is probably someone who rolls with Diddy and all the foolery that Diddy does. People want to hold on to him as a man of God. Proof by contradiction says, okay, this is what we really think is going on. But the thing we have to disprove is, is he a man of God? Done. Inference can't actually hard prove the other, the prospect of what he really did with TPN. Can't actually prove that. Inference by contradiction, based on the actual logical process that your next date and your next friendship and your next relationship, you can use this to vet any man. Proof by contradiction. Your red flags are telling you this man is no good. His representative is saying he is. So what do you do with it? Assume that he is. But collect the evidence. Take your time. Collect the evidence. Because if you can disprove that he's that man, then you've proven that he's a bad man. That's how you vet people in real life. I have given you that in this video. It's a long video. Like I said, get comfortable. This is as long as the Sunday sermon and the whole service that T.D. Jakes is going to give because he ain't going to have time to strike all these videos that I've linked to. I was a professional journalist. I do know how the game was played. I love y'all, just like the Apostle John said to Electa. 
I love y'all. Be careful. Do not be happy to your account that you funded these gobbling, false prophet, counterfeit, traitor, heady, high-minded, brute beast needed to be taken and destroyed. That scripture only I didn't come up with that myself. Do not get caught up in their condemnation and take some of that punishment that they should take along. I love you. All of you, even under common grace, have a purpose greater than to be enslaved willingly by these men. I've given you all I can on this subject. I hate to end the year, year like this, so we don't have to start the next one with the foolery. Happy New Year to you. There may be an on the climb today. Depends on how I feel after church. But y'all have a good day now. Thank you for being with me through 2023. And Lord willing, I'll see you either later today or in 2024. Goodbye.